Hey guys, so today we are going to talk about, I guess, Magic the Gathering stars being robbed. And this happened in Arizona. The other one happened in New Hampshire, very close back to back. And I'm sure several other stores have been robbed in the meantime. Now, Magic the Gathering has an interesting... Because Magic cards weren't always valuable. They are incredibly valuable and, more importantly, incredibly liquid nowadays. You could steal some Magic cards and then sell it straight back to the people that you stole it from. Possible. Now, I'm not saying that's very wise, but... Because cards are fungible items, like a misty rainforest is a misty rainforest. How can you tell what the history of that card was? So the Geekery, which is notable because they appeared in a WPN premiere commercial recently, is considered one of the higher-end stores by Magic the Gathering. It was recently... Somebody came in. I'm going to show you the video a little later. They knew exactly what they wanted to take. This isn't somebody who doesn't know magic. This is someone who's been to the store before. He goes directly for all the valuable magic cards. And then off he goes with several, probably I would say $100,000 in cards. Now this is very devastating. Um, but that's what happens when you put a lot of valuable items, which are pretty much cash. Imagine putting cash in the storefront, uh, almost like diamonds. So a, a diamond store is going to put all its diamonds in the back in a safe. But Magic Store will put its cards in the front because it's a little easier to organize. Here we're going to see the video. A person... Comes in, breaks in, takes all the cards, takes a massive amount of cards in less than five minutes. This isn't somebody who's not been to the store before. Look at him break in. He's going to smash the windows. Okay, here we go. He's coming in. Uh, I don't know what that is. That's a chair, I guess. But it is sad due to how valuable magic cards have become is that it's essentially displaying a bunch of cash and that's what i could never take my anime figures home from my store i was always worried about that but i would always take my magic cards away i would always put them in a safe because i knew that if my store had magic cards magic players would try to break in and steal them because of the area that we were in it is very sad that our community has come to this point because something like this, assuming that the store is not insured, it should be. My store was insured, but getting insurance money sometimes takes a while. You might, your store might, your local game store might go under. And even emotionally for people to rob you or for people to steal from you, I can tell you from personal experience, it's very draining. Um, and when you provide a community space for people to play magic and somebody does this, which who is part of your community, I mean, magic is such a inclusive community that cheaters, people who steal, people who break in, like people will say, oh, this is not a magic player, but he is a magic player. He's stealing magic cards. He must have played magic. He is part of our community, and you might not like that, and I don't think anyone would say he's a good part of our community, but nonetheless, he is part of our community. So he goes uh, very quickly. He knows exactly what cards to go after, and he goes after them. Um, there's not too much else that I can show you in this video, but I will show you the video where many of you commented that you may not, you may know the uh, certain YouTuber called Weds, <laughs> essentially people are breaking into stores because of a the value of magic cards and b the li how liquid they are and c it's really easy to break into a magic store um, it is not like a diamond store where you have to break into a safe it is not like a pawn store which it has bars you know People have asked me about that. Uh, the place I live in is called Humble, Texas. It's one of the most, out of all these cities in Texas, it ranks in the top five in terms of crime. 
I'm going to make another video um, showing you just the crime. When my neighbor was robbed, she was she had kids. Luckily, her kids were not home, and somebody broke her door in, and then she locked herself, barricaded herself upstairs in her bedroom, and then the guy still went and. Honestly, if the kids had been there, they might have, you know, I, I don't want to say anything. I know the family very well, but it is very high crime. Um, it is Magic the Gathering store may attract criminals. I mean, as silly as that sounds, I'll just go ahead. It's a chicken or an egg or, or Magic stores renting cheap locations because the rent is cheap and they're kind of shadier or or. You know, magic stores making the neighborhood shadier. Uh, I, I don't know. It comes down to the fact that this isn't a one-time occurrence. There's not that many magic stores in existence. And, you know, Pat's Games in Austin, I heard that they're doing very well. And they're opening a second location. Good for them. But they have been... I mean, the only other thing I can think of, which is, like, very crazy. You guys are going to kill me and flame me for this, but... What if, like, people are hiring people to break into them for insurance money? Right? Like, the number of magic stores robbed is just, like, insane compared to the number of, like, any store robbed, right? A, I think the, again, the cards themselves are quite valuable, and that might be one of the reasons. But even considering valuables, magic stores are robbed all the time. Like, once a year almost. Uh, DNA Comics, for instance, um, there's this family who come around every Christmas and they steal about $300 of t-shirts. Like, it's like a family. The little kids steal. Um, my friend has a video of a little kid. No, you know, the sister was probably seven and the little kid was no bigger than five and he was stealing like there was no tomorrow. Like, did the parents just tell him, hey, you know, hide this stuff under... I mean, obviously, it's really difficult to consult a little kid. But if this wasn't natural, if this it wouldn't continue to occur, right? The number of magic stores being robbed by, I assume, their, the people who play there is just tremendously high. And it might not be as obvious as this guy who breaks in or the other guy that will show you who breaks in. But people steal from stores all the time. Um, I know at pre-release, people steal a lot at pre-release. Um, not just magic cards, but like comic books, anime figures. Anime figures is hard to steal, but I always worry about that because uh, sometimes, you know, you do have anime figures worth... I have one worth 800 to to $1,000. It's just that rare. Now, Pokemon community, you, you don't see this very often in the Pokemon community. Um, I don't know why, but I ran Magic events, I ran Pokemon events, and Magic events, things would always go missing. Uh, and Pokemon events, if anything, people just left extra Pokemon cards for you to give back to them when they come back. So, I get it. I mean, Darium used to be a huge Magic channel, and actually, Alpha Investment says that he inspired him to open his channel and he was I think a very big inspiration for many magic youtubers and he gave up magic to do Pokemon um, I'm sure that part of the calculation was the community was how the community so you have grown adults smashing windows breaking in and stealing smashing cameras and stealing magic cards like no the answer has to be no or the answer has to be, get a job, you loser. So, there's other ways. You can buy magic cards. You can save money. You can trade for magic cards. This type of behavior, I don't want to say it's common. It's not common, but it's like cheating, right? Once one magic pro cheats, the other magic pros have to say, oh, well, maybe we should cheat too. Just the number of magic pros that got caught cheating, it, it's not like... A random number it cannot it's not an ordinary number what I'm trying to say is there there is something about magic that makes people cheat and steal I don't know if it's the community I don't know if it's the valuableness of the cards today but this person 
is risking going to jail, grand larceny, because it's over ten grand, ten thousand dollars. Um, he is risking his life. You know, if he gets caught, and I hope he does, he'll go to jail for a long time. There's video evidence. Um, I'm sure that. Um, and he's a magic player, so people will say he's not part of our community. Our community has predators. It has Franks. It has Alexes who cheat. All like, in my opinion, what Alex did was no different than this. He cheated people out, out of the potential to win Power Nine. He cheated people out of ten thousand dollars, a actual cash amount, which he's very proud of. And he's been cheating people ever since of prizes. So if someone cheats at your local card shop and they win every single pre-release, which is what happened at DNA Comics, the same dudes kept winning. It's like, this game is very random. If you play MTG Arena, you know what I mean. Even if you have the perfect deck, you do get mana flooded and sometimes you don't have enough mana. You're just not going to win every single game, every single time. It's just not possible. There are times that variants will get the better out of you. But it seems like the same pros win all the time. It seems like the same people at FNM win all the time. It seems like the same people have the same really good cards. Like, why is that? Like, if Magic is a game of variants, how is that guy drawing exactly what he needs at every single time? So here, I think we have a very clear case of someone who is part of the community. He knows what he's doing, and he's decided to, for whatever reason, you might say maybe he needs money, maybe he needs, uh, maybe as like a child, a sixth child. I mean, even in the worst case scenario, there are better ways than robbing your local game store, which may or may not recover from this, and. Frankly, it's sickening. Um, it's very sickening. I am going e-commerce because I do not want to deal with this. Uh, this is something that I have nightmares about. Um, given my location, and I'll make another video because there's been actually since the... I could make a video every single hour of a robbery happening <laughs> near my store or in my store. Um, and it's very scary because... In this case, my neighbor is a, um, she's a single mom with two kids. Again, luckily the kids were in school. A guy breaks into her home, and when the guy realizes that she's home, he actually gets more excited because now he's going to commit, you know, blank blank assault. Uh, luckily, she locked. Or, I mean, this whole situation is not lucky, right? But. She realized the danger. She locked herself in the room, barricaded it with drawlers and stuff. Uh, but the guy still tried to go into the room. I don't think the guy was really... In Eventually, he stole a purse and I think a cell phone or something. But I don't think the guy was that interested in actually stealing stuff. He was interested in, you know, other stuff, which was really bad. Which, you know, bodily harm, I would say. And we live in a community where... You know, magic players rob other magic players. Magic players cheat other magic players on a daily basis. And this is what happens. Um, it's sad. This store was named one of the best stores by Wizard of the Coast. It was this and the Mox Boarding House and then like Harry Yuya and then a place in Brazil. It's like a top five magic store according to the Wizard of the Coast premier store level. And it gets robbed. Um, if a store like this can get robbed in a lo good location, then a store like mine would be easily robbed, right? Like, I don't know. I think there's something to be said, and the people won't say it because they feel like it offends, obviously it offends their audience, right? Like, Tolarian will never say, Wedge will never say, it because they need the donations. I don't give a blank. I think I make $2 on Patreon a month, <laughs> if I'm lucky. Um, there's something wrong with our community today that wasn't the problem back in my olden days where people would give each other cards and they would lend each other. There was an entire format where you bid on everyone's deck. 
No one's thinking in this format. Otherwise, the format wouldn't exist. The format doesn't exist today because you would be worried that someone would steal your deck. But there was an entire format when I grew up where you would go with random strangers, you would put decks in a pile, and then everyone would play a different deck. And then at the end of the night, you would give back the deck. And you wouldn't even need to count up. Everyone just took their own decks and left. No one counted to see if cards were missing or, you know, because, you know, that's, that's not what you did. You didn't steal cards because A, cards were not that valuable at the time. And B, you were in, that was an actual community. All of these like fake community members and fake community, blah, 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 donate. Okay, if somebody's talking about magic community and is followed up with, can you donate me money? Come on, c come on, guys. You guys can't be that stupid, right? Like, come on. And in doing so and in being inclusive, we have to include predators, we include Franks. We include people who steal, people who cheat, people who lie, um, offenders, all types of offenders. And that's what we are, because the only person we cannot include is a Pepe mean frogger, uh, a memer. <laughs> and, you know, like, hey, I can tell you what the good times were in Magic. And many of you won't even remember this because you didn't play back then. I'm old school, and I remember that the majority of formats we played in, um, was, it was fun because you were part of a community that would do anything to help you. I looked, when I was younger, um, my, my, the person I really didn't like in my magic group, he needed a, a Diabolic Edict to complete his deck. And he was playing Mono Black. And I knew I had the Edict, so I told him I had the Edict. I spent two hours that, you know, at my home, disorganized as I was, finding that la one edict that I had, and then I gave it to him. That's what I remember of the Magic community. I don't remember people robbing each other. I don't remember people cheating each other. I don't remember any of this until, like, inclusion came along. And then we became so inclusive. No, I'm here to tell you there are some people in the Magic community... That we should not include. This includes cheaters. Repeat offenders. This includes predators. All bad predators. Including Frank. Which has he's been accepted in our community again. So thank you predators. Great win for thumbs up predators. It's gross right. It's disgusting. This includes people who steal. I know that if someone stole from me, I would never want to play with them again. This is not the first time. When someone breaks into a store and steals about $100,000 of cards, that is not the first time they stole. Just like when somebody steals or cheats at an event where they can win Power 9, that's not the first time they cheated, right? Because they won $10,000, that's not the first event they cheated. This is not the first time this Magic player stole. Well, anyway, um, I hope you guys subscribe to my other channel so I can get my sweet vengeance. I'm waiting and waiting. We do have a contest for a free Masters 25 box. Yes, it's called Masters 25. I'm looking at it right now. That's going to be pretty good given the price of JST Mind Sculptor right now and in the future. Bye, guys.